All right. Welcome to another tutorial. Now this one's gonna be on, um, I guess a little bit more advanced properties of the uh, widget interaction component. I'm actually gonna be discussing the, uh, the events a little bit more um, and some stuff that I left off in my uh, quick start to the widget interaction component. Um, as you can see, this is a little bit different. Um, I didn't want to keep going into my Vive for the widget interaction, so I ended up doing a first person um, template, and this is what's going to happen. So, obviously, next level, first level, which is this level, checkbox, and uh, just letting you know this works exactly like the old one. Just a couple little different things here going on. Um, next level just takes you to the next level which has the same thing same exact widget and then i go to the first level um and you'll see some print strings popping up and i'll just be discussing that right now actually so when we left off in the other video um we're just gonna go actually i lied i'm gonna go back to the first person character and this is the widget interaction component and I put it on the uh, first person camera and everything's pretty much the same except for a couple things here um, I have auto activate on but I'm actually going to turn it off for now and I'm going to show you where it's in virtual user index so I actually did figure out what this was and um, went to the C++ file which I should, probably should have done the first time around and basically it's pretty much uh well i'm going to read it to you it says represents the virtual user in slate right so when this component is registered it handles uh, it gets a handle to the virtual slate user will be so virtual slate zero probably obviously real slate eight as a first index by default that the virtual users begin the goal is to never have them overlap with real input hardware as this will likely conflict with focus states so you don't actually want to change like where the mouse uh, keyboard focuses um, I actually ended up running into this problem because I had two widget components or widget interaction components on two separate characters in the same map but they were using the same index and I wasn't able to get anything working um, that was due to both of them um, conflicting with each other so if you have multiple characters you will probably want to have um, and you want them to um, use it, you're going to have to use the different uh, virtual uh, slates uh, users or virtual users, uh, different numbers for different characters. Um, here it always says represents the virtual user index. Each virtual user should be represented by a different index number. This will maintain separate capture and focus slates for each of them. And to be honest, this whole focus character or fingertip thing, still unsure about. Um, but yeah, pretty much it says each user virtual controller virtual fingertips being simulated should use a different pointer index. I'm still going to have to figure out what the heck uh, that means and all that. Uh, and then, uh, and for clarification on a uh, world mouse and center screen. So world, like I said, is just like regular using which regular orientation and location. Mouse, like I thought, mouse location for only the first person or first player controller. Center screen um, is the center of the first local player screen. And this has a caveat to it here. It's, um, it needs to work, it'd be able to work multiple player controllers, perhaps finding a uh, player controller via the adder owner chain. Maybe you need to set up the player control that owns this guy. Maybe we should key off the virtual user index and expose modify key state. So this seems to not be working, um, the center screen. Uh, I didn't get a play with that, but and then custom. Um, so the custom is it, um, if you wanted to do some kind of custom hit location, um, you would use that. You would just use F hit result um, that's called by set custom hit result. And okay, so let's get back to our blueprint. I ran into a few issues, which I'm, I, I'm not sure if they're bugs or just um, 
they're met. So like I said, I deactivate auto activate because by default, this is off, right? And actually by default, this is off too. That's the physics should update. That's off. So this is what's going to happen. Um, as you know, everything has, has a hover state and obviously has a click right. So we got that all working out. Um, just in case you wanted to actually know. You should see the first video if you want to know about how to do the click events. Um, so let's start off with the first widget interaction event, which was the um, unhovered widget change. <sighs> like my comment says, I, I really didn't know what the use case was. Um, not expert on UMG or you know doing menus and stuff like that. Maybe I'll find a use for it later, but um, I didn't have to promote these either. All I did here was try to figure out what this meant, right? What um, the widget component is actually your the new widget component that you hover over, and then the previous one is obviously the old one, right? So all I did to do that check was here and play, and so right off the bat, obviously you have not it's um the old one or new one. It's gonna be null, right? If you get off the screen. However, I put these close enough. The new one is this one, menu two, and this is menu one. So we're gonna go back and forth. You'll see that. So I'm I'm assuming that if you maybe make um, child uh, widgets and you turn one off and you turn another one, this will be um, useful for whatever reason. Uh, someone suggested that you might want to highlight one. Or if you have both of them on screen, you might want to highlight one while um, and the new one, the one that's currently, you can highlight this one and then deactivate or de-highlight this one and vice versa. I don't know what the use case would be, but it's there. The next one is the next event. Physics volume change. All right, so this one was kind of weird. So this one says, delicate when will be called when physics volume has been changed. Uh, this one again, I couldn't figure out well, what's up with this, right? Um, this is by default on almost every physics or any kind of actor um, that has physics component or physics anything. Um, so this one is, this is what, where is, so I had to pop out a physics volume, which is here. All right. And remember, I toggled that off by default. Nothing happens, right? Cool. Now, if I toggle that this back on, whether or not the cache physics volume, this component overlaps, should be updated when the component is moved. Um, when I toggle that back on, uh, this is just a simple press string getting the, the name of the new component. Now, when I go on the new one, I'm at the physics volume, right? And then when I move out, I'm on the, the old one, right? The default, new, old. New, oh, again, not too sure what you'd want this for because when I go to the new one, somehow it deactivates my widget interaction component. Um, oops, I got out. All right, stay back here. So I'm not entirely too sure why, but it deactivates it. Not sure if that's a bug or intentional. Uh, again, I don't know what the use case is. But uh, I'll go back to this in a second. Do, do, do. See, I'm out of it. Okay. The next one I want to talk about is activate and deactivate, which is the next one over here. Um, so this was kind of weird because in the beginning, and you'll see, um, you'd figure that since it's technically activated right now, right? Um, since it's working right now, I'd be able to deactivate it, right? By pressing B, which is B to deactivate, right? But no, it doesn't do that. Nope, sure doesn't. Um, what happens is I have to activate it first and you see that activated, right? Now it's activated, activated, and now I can deactivate it. Now it doesn't work, right? Okay. I'm not sure if that's a bug. Um, I'll report it anyway. Um, obviously, like I said, you can just check this auto activate and it automatically activates the component. Um, 
I don't understand. What I don't understand is how it's even activated if it's not activated, if that even makes sense. Because obviously I should be able to deactivate it um, if it's activated, right? But technically I had to manually activate it and then deactivate it. Um, but how's it working if it's not activated, right? So I don't know, could be a bug, could be something silly. Um, but yeah, pretty much now um, I'm not gonna activate it, I'm just gonna deactivate and it doesn't work. See? So again, um, again, let's do that, oops. And then we're gonna deactivate. Now I can't do anything. That did seem like to move something, but maybe it's too late. And if I wanna activate it again, bam. Um, let's see. I think that's really all I wanted to discuss. Those are the only four events. Um, I'm not, again, I'm not sure what you'd use most of these for. I'm sure there's a use case out there for you. Um, if there is, there, well, there you go. Um, That's about it, wrapping up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you guys didn't, oh, no, no. Um, so the, I'll go back to the physics volume again. So over the, the old, the new one, right? It doesn't work. So if you activate it active, it doesn't work. There's no way to um, actually activate this while it's in this new physics volume. Oh, I changed, I changed the, the gravity here a little bit but um yeah then it's working so i'm not sure what's up with that physics volume if that's a bug or a tenant feature but if you guys enjoyed this video please subscribe uh, and check me out i'm usually streaming kind of odd hours during the day but um definitely late at night eastern uh eastern time and uh, probably definitely easier easily after nine ten o'clock but uh, I'm usually on answering questions. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. I'll look into them. Hopefully help somebody out. All right, until next time.